Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder, to the presentation, I'd say, of the Lübeck frigate. And this is a wild beast. I cannot say it otherwise. And at the same time, it is really, really weak. Now, to put this into perspective, it would take just um, um, a stream, you know, me on, on Twitch streaming this. Um, to be honest, to show you the various different situations, how they develop and how the map is mandatory for the ship's demise or its success. And so much is taken out of your hand, but there are also mighty tools given to you. And I, I'm afraid I cannot show you everything. What I can you show is that there are many many situations where this is just absolutely wild and you get good thank you by the way to all the people that have abused this phrase in the past to make it like an insult but no you have to also get good a bit and the first wildness needs to be absolutely controlled to get the maximum out of this and then there is this watch that Those are nearly 15 inch rockets and they have like 100 kilograms of TNT equivalent filler and they just really kill. They kill when they hit, but you have a very limited range in which you can actually use them, which is also something that you need to train. The 100mm main guns are more a decoration, it's all about the 40mm that you can say, that you can see on the side. This thing is wild. The last few naval videos that I did were about the Italian Saeta and Frecchia. And they have those infamous 40mm-70 Breda Bofors Type 107 autocannons. And you have the very same here on this ship. But it's not just two like with the Zeta. It's not three with the option that you can choose on the Frecker. You have six of them and due to a wing design layout or um, I don't know if you call it ech echelon turrets, you can actually bring five of them to bear. And all this on a premium frigate that you can earn in the crafting event called Strategist. So here you could see I spawned and I was already dead. The deadly salvo was already in the air. No, no need for me to go on this map. What you need is close quarters, ambushing enemies. And then this thing just goes absolutely berserk on enemies. And it's difficult to put this in like 10, 15 minutes of video to show you how extreme this thing is in all aspects, how extremely powerful it is, how extremely weak it can be, how extremely broken naval forces is, how extreme the compression really affects this thing. Because with a battle rating of 4.7, you can and will face 5.7 cruisers and you have no armor piercing capabilities whatsoever. And in the open, it's a fight that the enemy always will win. Yes, you can fight back to 10 kilometers with your 100 millimeter guns, but they just have HE. You are an absolute nemesis to aircraft though, because both your main guns, which are very high rate of fire based, and also your 40 millimeters, they have proximity fuse high explosive shells, HEVT rounds. And they also can shred destroyers like you would not believe. This ship has its fair share of weaknesses versus especially US destroyers where you really have to take out their weapon positions and then focus on the stern and the bow to avoid the armored belt like I shall demonstrate here. Knock out his main guns, knock out the torpedo tubes hopefully before they can uh, do anything. No, I go straight for the stern and the bow section and then you can see another problem the overheating of those guns the overheating 
not just is kind of a timer up until the point that your guns jam and then you kind of go through a reload or unjamming phase or literally cooldown, you also get extremely inaccurate. Whereas you first have for the first five, six seconds pinpoint accuracy. Now you go down the rabbit hole when you go into the oval phase, both with your main guns and the 40 millimeters. You can see that this is a really unconventional way of presenting you this, um, this ship. The question is, is it worth it? And I have to say, absolutely. But a fair share of warnings have to be given out. Nobody guarantees you that this thing will not get power creeped in the future with other new additions to other nations. Nobody guarantees you that the compression will not get worse. And now there is another thing. The Köln is of, no, sorry, the Lübeck is of the Köln class. And the Köln is a very similar ship in the German tech tree at the same battle rating at the same tier. But that has repair costs of 40,000 civil lines. Whereas the Lübeck that you can see in this video has 3,410 civil lines. But nobody guarantees you that this won't go up to 10, 15, 20k, even though it's a premium. I have seen similar repair costs in the Soviet tech tree, which have gone up and down. Currently, for example, the MBK Project 186 MK85, battle rating 3.3 rank 2 premium ship, has a repair cost of 8,000 civil lines. But that then goes to the premium status, because with the Lübeck in the right place, you can earn a filthy amount of civil lines and RP because it has literally modifiers that are not far off from high tier cruisers but you get more kills, you get more activity, you get caps etc etc etc. The biggest downside of this ship is that it is like an oversized patrol boat but it will always spawn with destroyers to escape the destroyer fight and to just farm patrol boats, planes and ambush destroyers. That's the sweet spot, but it's also difficult to get. So to really get into this position, that's the part. Now, there are two other weapons that I quickly want to talk about. First of all, there are the torpedoes. You have four Mark 44 torpedoes and they are trash. That's what they are. They are slow, only 56 kilometers per hour. They have a travel distance of five and a half kilometers, which is not a lot. And they have a 55 kilogram heavy warhead. So that won't sink light cruisers or heavy cruisers, which have, um, you know, torpedo bulges that can withstand 200, 250 kilogram heavy warheads. So they are a bit more decorational or very situational versus you know, a patrol boat that comes around the corner and you just happen to have marked. Yeah, sure, then it's cool. And the firing angles are very limited and there are more forwards. And that's two per side. They are better than nothing, but okay. Then you also have the option of loading depth charges. But then, then there is also the option of loading the M50 Bofors and they have 375 millimeters of caliber and they are anti-submarine rockets. They have 250 kilograms of mass and a bursting mass of 107 kilograms, twice of what the torpedoes have. They are slow though, 260 meters per second. It's like throwing a big bomb towards the enemy. And they have limited firing angles, they have limited range, but they also have a minimum range depending on the bearing. For broadside you can actually fire them relatively close, but I think the maximum range is two and a half to three kilometers. But to hit then a target, that's difficult. But when you hit something, oh boy, oh boy, it hurts. And uh, I have an example uh, here in just a few minutes and I also presented you one earlier. So yeah, this ship is absolutely crazy. So it's decently fast with uh, 59, 60 kilometers per hour. It has no armor and it's very modern. 
It's the combination of those 40 millimeters, the gun handling, the rate of fire, the proximity fuse, the high caliber long range NTA, which when you um, just let it to the AI, they just under lead. So watch here, this rocket. I try my best here, shortening the range. It's like uh, 1.8 kilometers and we get numerous hits and then a smack out, a direct hit and a smack out on what is a very similar sized ship, a light destroyer, the type 1939. So you have the radar, you have all those nice fancy tools. But to, as I mentioned in the beginning, to put this into the situation where you don't get shot, where you have an ambush, that is not very often given. And a lot of maps just make it outright impossible. There are tips and tricks for very experienced people. But at the end of the day, this is something that I can recommend if you are familiar with naval forces and all the tricks and all the stuff and just knowing not just the basics but also how to specialize in certain situations how to outsmart your opposition then this thing is crazy and despite your ferocious anti-aircraft battery despite all your tools that you have at some point there are too many aircraft in the air and regardless how many you shoot down and how many you focus, how you distribute your long range and short range uh, anti-aircraft capabilities, there is always this one aircraft that you just don't see, that you just see too late and that just comes in and smacks you after you have spent like what feels like half an hour getting into position like that one. And that marks the end of that brand patch. Two caps, two aircraft and eight kills. And um, that was so far the most successful battle that I had. There were battles where I was deeply frustrated. There were battles where I just simply had absolute fun wrecking stuff. This, there is no middle ground with this ship. It goes from one extreme to the other. And it depends on you. So it will make you RP and it will make you civil line and it can be fun in the best of circumstances like there is no tomorrow. But what brings the future? If the repair cost will rise, if this thing gets nerfed, if, if, if it gets significantly power creep, if the compression ammo forces gets even worse, if the game mode kind of stays dead after the event, nobody can tell you not even i and i'm just limiting myself with the naval content despite being known as the ship guy in war thunder to the absolute minimum where i can just bring my expertise if you can call it that to the table and just give you kind of a personal opinion and facts together with my experience to put things into perspective and it's not that easy with a ship like this but i can tell you the 40 millimeters are absolutely crazy but don't overheat them and that is kind of how you play this thing and how it is really great and on that bombshell that's it for me today so thanks for watching thanks for listening i hope you appreciate this video let me know in the comment section give it a like if it did subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other on the battlefields in the skies and on the waves of War Thunder.